Hello and welcome back. Uh, this is the second video in a three-part series and in this video I'll be going over how I went about setting up the lighting for the first sequence in the intro for this video. So without wasting any time let's just get into the video. So the first thing you'll notice about this project is that the core uh, focus of the whole animation is the object is the shoe. So there's not much else going on in the scene there's actually nothing else in the scene because we're just focusing on the shoe and when working on projects like these when you have things moving around and you are, you've animated your objects you've animated the camera without uh more objects in the scene to to give to give more visual context of what's going on it can be difficult to perceive where the animation is happening is it the object that's being animated is it the camera that's being animated and you'll notice that if i turn on the viewport overlays immediately you get this visual feedback where you can much more easily tell what's going on what's moving when the camera is moving and when the object is moving so it turns out that it's quite easy to give more environmental context in a situation like this one without having to add more objects in your scene. And uh, in this project, I did it using volumetric lighting. So I have this really massive cube, which will be the volume object, and I'll just scale it up so that it's covering everything in the scene. And then I'll add a shader, and it's just a principled volume shader, which makes shading volumes really, really, really easy. And I have a noise texture, which will be feeding into the density. And this just makes it so that um, the volumetrics inside the cube uh, and all the fog that it, uh, it forms won't be uniformly distributed across the volume of the cube. So you have blotches and spaces where, where some areas are more dense and some areas are less dense. I'm then adding a color ramp and then you, you can use this color ramp to just crush the contrast and make uh, and make it more more or less extreme make the variation of the volume inside the cube more or less extreme I'm also adding a math node and the purpose of this math math node is that I found that I had to use really tiny numbers to get the density to look right so I'm just dividing whatever is coming from the color ramp by a thousand to get really small numbers. And I thought that just makes it easier to fine tune and get it to look right. So now when you play the animation, you will notice that without having to add a lot more objects on your scene and just keeping the focus of the animation on the shoe, we now have a lot, a lot more environmental context and you get this really cool effect as the camera is flying through the regions of varying density. And this sun lamp in the background is the one that's just uh, lighting the whole volumetric object. Um, without it, if you'll see that if I turn it off in the scene, you won't really get that, that, that volumetric effect because there's nothing for, for, to scatter that light through the volumetric object. So I just have that sun lamp and the sun lamp is serving two purposes. One, I'm using it to, I'm placing it very carefully so that as the animation begins, I don't want to reveal what the texture of the shoe looks like. I don't want to give all that detail at the very beginning. I want to keep it uh, shrouded in mystery until I finally come to reveal it towards the end of the sequence. And I'm using this sun lamp, one, to get that volumetric uh, effect to, to work and also to just give this shoe uh, a silhouette, to just separate it from the background and give it like an outline, uh, just using the lighting. Now, because the position and the rotation of the camera is animated, uh, the camera moves from uh, looking at the shoe from one direction, and then towards the end, it moves to the other direction. And because this position of the camera is animated, I was also forced to animate the position of the sun lamp because I didn't want to, I still didn't want to see the other, how the other side of the shoe looks. So as the camera moves from one side to the other, I also um, animated the rotation of the sun 
to also move along with the camera. So lastly, just moments before I reveal what the texture on the shoe looks like, I use the, the node setup that we saw in the texturing video and give like a teaser of what the, what the texture on the shoe looks like using emission shaders. And then I animate the shoe moving now into this region where I have this light setup. And here I'm using lights with very localized areas of effect. Uh, remember, if you add a sun lamp, it's going to affect the volumetrics and it's going to make the volume uh, twice as bright. And we don't want to do that. So I'm using uh, area lights and point lights so that I can contain the influence of these lamps to just this area where the light they cast won't affect it uh, in the position where I don't want the texture to be revealed. So here I can just uh, grab the lights and move them about and just essentially it's like I'm just painting light onto the shoe. I just move them about and place them until I find just a nice lighting that looks good on the shoe. So that's it for this one. Uh, stay safe and see you in the next one where we talk about animation. Bye. Oh,